In this video, we're going to be creating a super glossy candy cane text effect in Photopea. Hi there and welcome to the video. I'm starting this with a 1080p document and a plain black background. Firstly, click on the character tool icon and select a font that you like. Something soft and more rounded works best. I downloaded a great free font called Spongy, which I've linked to in the description, but please feel free to use any of Photopea's included fonts. Here I'm just tweaking some of the settings like size and leading. I'll also change the colour to white just so we can see it for the moment, but exact colour doesn't really matter at this stage as it will be overridden by a later process anyway. I'll just choose centre alignment and with the text tool active, click down and start typing whatever you like. I'm just making sure that the anti-aliasing is set to smooth to minimise any pixelated or jagged edges. Create a blank layer and fill it with white. We'll be using a filter on this layer to create the stripe effect after first converting it to a smart object. Go to the filter menu and choose filter gallery. Head to the sketch section and select halftone pattern, which will be set to dot as a default. Now you can use either circle or the line option to create the stripes for this. Circle will create a ring of stripes starting from a center point and line will give you more traditional straight stripes. It's totally up to you, but I chose circle for this example. Adjust the size option to taste, but for this file, I maxed it out at 15. Then tweak the contrast to get a sharper or softer edge to the stripes, depending on what you like. This can always be changed after the fact once we're back in the document. We now need to clip the stripe layer to the text by holding the Alt key and clicking on the layer icon. Now the stripes will only affect the text below. Create a colour fill adjustment and choose a bright red shade. Then clip this layer as well to the layers below and change the blend mode to screen. Right, this is looking good, but I want to add a little bit more variance to the stripes so they aren't so perfectly aligned. So for this, we'll go to the filter menu, click distort and then wave. As you can see, adjusting these settings can get us some interesting variation to the stripes. Honestly, I just experimented until I found something I liked, which wasn't too extreme. Now, let's add some shape and specular gloss to this candy. Double click next to the text layer name to bring up the layer style screen. Go to the bevel and emboss section and adjust the depth, size and angle parameters. With this stage, we're looking to get a little bit more of a 3D look to the text and add in some small sharp highlights. The numbers I've used here work for me, but you may have to experiment for yourself to get them to work on your particular image. Uncheck the Use Global Angle box before adjusting angle settings so it won't affect any additional layer styles we create in the future. Now, I want to make these highlights a little bit sharper and more specular. We'll then combine these with more subtle highlights in a while, and this is the secret to making look something look super glossy. Click the small triangle next to the contour icon to choose the contour shape. Anything spiky will work to a degree, but you can see the one I selected, which worked great for me. Adjust the shadow slider to around 25% and push the highlight slider to the maximum. Notice how brighter the effect looks now and the highlights are nice and sharp. Once you're happy with this, click OK to continue. Select all of the main three layers by clicking on the text layer, holding the shift key down and then clicking on the color fill layer at the top. Then press Ctrl or Command G to put them all into a group folder. Now we're going to add the second layer of highlights as I mentioned earlier, but as we can't apply a second bevel and emboss effect over the text again, we will add this to the folder we've just created. So double click next to the folder name to enter layer styles. Go to the bevel and emboss section, you will see that I'm entering some different parameters than earlier, as we're now creating a broader and slightly softer looking highlight effect to the text, that when combined with the existing small sharper highlights will look very appealing and glossy. 
Again, with this stage, I just experimented until I got the look I wanted, so the exact numbers might not work for you, but it's fun to experiment and see what you can come up with to suit your own tastes. But you can see the kind of effect I'm going for here as a point, as a point to start off. Just make sure you take the shadow opacity down to 0% on this one, as we just want to use the highlights in this step. Adjust the highlight slider to taste. As it's on a dark background, I'm going to add a bit of inner shadow to make it blend into the environment a little more. This is a completely optional step which you can skip if you'd like to keep the effect as bright and as bold as possible. You can see how it gives it a bit more of a 3D look as it slightly darkens around the edges of the text. Click OK when you're happy. It's looking great now, but I want it to be a little more quirky and playful, so we can do this by offsetting the height of the different characters. Go to your character options screen and highlight a particular character by clicking and dragging over it with your text tool active. Then go back to the character options and change the baseline shift parameter to either a plus or a minus to lower or raise the height of the selected character. I found that between minus 20 to plus 20 was enough in this case. Repeat across all characters individually um, to get the offset effect you're looking for. Looks good enough to eat.